This is The Infiltrator's Scary Stories. Tonight, 13 scary stories from people who work the graveyard shift. Number one. So I was working at an oil refinery in India, doing the always fun 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. shift. We would do actual work around 9 every night, then screw around and just make sure everything else stays stable. Well, around 2 a.m., the compressor tripped. What the fuck? Great, the whole plant is down. We check and see there was no reason it happened. No high pressure, PDI, vibration, etc. Okay, these things happen every so often. Whatever, let's get going again. Next night, the same thing happens. This goes on for four days or so. And we're getting chewed out by Oleg the sadistic chief who famously berated an unmarried Indian man for being a virgin and would beat people with bamboo sticks. Really excellent human being, of course. Luckily, we were doing commissioning stuff, so losing production wasn't freakishly huge deal, only a moderate huge deal. If it was Starbucks, it would be the tall pumpkin latte of disasters. You know, delicious, but at least it wasn't vente. So me and my friend are talking, and we decide to take one of the security cameras and turn it onto the compressor. The compressor trips again. We go to the security room and get the guard to let us watch the video. It's boring. It's an oil refinery in India in the middle of night. Some lizards crawling around. A few giant flies go by. Then suddenly, we see a dark figure approaching. Maybe three feet tall and walking with a hunch. It goes up to the compressor and starts turning some dials and pressing some buttons. The compressor trips and it scats out of the area. Oh, but this was no dark spirit from no sleep. It was a goddamn monkey. The solution? They hired an Indian boy to sit there at night with a cricket paddle thing. Number two. I used to work late shift as a classroom IT support for a college. We didn't get a lot of high priority calls from night classes, so among other duties, we'd get a lot of repairs and maintenance done that couldn't be done when the classrooms were in use during the day. I don't mind the dark, so I wasn't in the habit of turning on lights in classrooms if I was just going in to do something real quick on the computer. Well, I had a ticket to install something on the instructor PC in a classroom. I had never been there before. It's about 10 o'clock p.m. When I get around to this ticket and I head into the classroom, I get about halfway across the room and suddenly freeze. The hair on the back of my neck is standing up and I feel 100% that I'm being watched. No, I'm surrounded. Then, as my eyes start to adjust, I see them. The entire classroom is encircled by hospital beds sticking out from the walls, and in every bed, there's a person sitting up looking right at me. Holy fucking shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I blurred out before finally realizing they're all just plastic dummies and I was in a nursing classroom. Number three. 
I was a janitor at a local gym. I was mopping the floors and had my back to the door, listening to my iPod. I turned around, and there was a man dressed in a super sketchy dollar store UPS costume. He had his face pressed to the glass, smiling and tapping on the window with one finger. Scared the shit out of me. He said to let him in to deliver a package. Mind you, it's 1.30 a.m. I said fuck that and called the cops. They found him trying to break into a house down the road. Number four. I work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. at a hospital. It's a small hospital that usually has an entire wing closed at a time, and a lot of the lights are turned off at night except for some of the hallway lights in some of the main hallways. That being said, people die there often, as it is a hospital. I was sitting in the ICU watching heart monitors one night, and all of a sudden, room 10's monitor switched on. Now, there's nobody in room 10, so that's kind of weird. Being that the only way to activate it was to be in the room or by me at the desk. Thinking it was the janitor cleaning, I disregarded it and switched it back to standby. About an hour later, it switched back on. I knew it wasn't the janitor because I had just walked past the room a minute earlier. So this time, I get up to go check it out. I walk down the dark hallway and get to room 10. The door was closed and I could tell the lights were off in the room. I opened the door and nobody was in the room. As I went to turn the monitor off, the door closed behind me. It scared the shit out of me, and I felt like someone was standing next to me. I turned the monitor off and left the room. I asked my co-workers who had been there longer if they had ever had anything weird happen. Most said no, but two of them said they've seen a ghost sitting on the bed in room 10. I don't believe in ghosts. I've never seen one, but I'm definitely spooked by room 10. Number five. I used to work in a warehouse that was really a grass seed factory where we stored, cleaned, bagged all of the seed that was brought in. For a while, I was working the late shift, 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. And I've got to say, when you're really out in the middle of nowhere, farmland for literally miles around, not only does it get dark, but everything can suddenly start getting really quiet real quick. Just the whole darkness and quiet can really be creepy and definitely can make you check behind you more than a few times. Definitely hurried to my car once or twice after shutting everything down and the quiet was literally deafening after 10 hours of constant noise. Number six. I used to work in a hospital in the IT department, and we did a number of overnight rollouts as well as on-call work and responded to issues that occurred overnight. Many weird things happened or appeared to have happened. The thing that struck me oddest was when I saw the coroner running at full speed down the corridor in the opposite direction towards the morgue. This guy, an older guy in his 50s or so, was going at full speed. I had never seen him above an amble before. But this time, 
He was going really fast. As he got close to me, he yelled, Get out of the way! I got another live one! I'm not sure what was more disturbing. The fact that he was dealing with that, I could only assume was a dead body that now appeared to be alive. Or the fact that he said another. Number seven. During my first week as a nurse, I had a post-mortem patient who let out a long groan during the after-death care. It was probably three o'clock, all by myself, in a room. I don't know if the person was dead, but they went to the coroner. Maybe they chopped up his body. I don't know, but that was the most traumatizing time I've ever had. And it being my first week, it scared me even worse. Number eight. Not my story, but my grandma's. She used to work in a hospital as a nurse. She's 83 now, so this was some time ago. The hospital was a geriatric hospital called Barnes, and uh, it's shut down now for unknown reasons. Anyway, the hospital was reported to be haunted by a gray lady who would be frequently seen by nurses and other staff. They would often hear people walking around upstairs and doors closing and banging, even though nobody could get to the floor above, and it was locked up. This would happen every night. Anyway, my grandma was on a night shift, waiting at the reception area, and she went to check on a patient. The patient had passed away. So my grandma had left the room. She turned to leave, and she heard the sound of glass smashing, and she turned and saw the window was smashed. She left to get someone to clean it up, and when they came back, the window was fixed, and there was no broken glass. Even though she swears that there was glass everywhere, things used to go missing, And late at night, people would be seen wandering corridors, unrecognized and unresponsive to the nurses. Maybe there were other stories about this hospital, but I don't know. It's now been turned into a housing estate. Number nine, I'm the night manager of a castle, which also operates as a hotel. I occasionally find the gates open when I do my rounds, which can be worrying, and fuses tend to blow often, which leave you in complete darkness. There was one night, though, at about 3 o'clock a.m., when I was walking across the courtyard. I looked up to see a woman staring at me from one of the room's windows, which I could have sworn was unoccupied that night. She watched me for about an hour and a half as I collected wood for the fire and did my rounds. When I got back to the reception desk, I found the fire list, which shows us all of the guests in the house but I decided not to look to see if the room was actually occupied. I've also had other staff members tell me stories about all the ghosts that suddenly hang around. Luckily, I haven't seen anything else yet. Number 10. 
Number 10. My best friend worked in a morgue during his undergraduate years, studying with the intent to be a doctor. He was working graveyard shift one night. I got a phone call with him screaming and shouting about how he's going to quit his job, end his career, and pursue English literature instead. After several minutes of this, he finally calmed down and told me what had happened. It seems that he was sitting at his desk, studying, and suddenly the corpse across the room sat up rapidly and turned its head toward him. He ran outside into the parking lot and called me, shouting and panicking, hyperventilating. Later, he explained that this sometimes happens. Before the bodies are drained, their muscles contract. Typically, their arms or legs. But sometimes the abdominal muscles or neck muscles. Number 11. I worked as a CNA in a nursing home, and some residents are out of their minds. Well, one night, a CNA from the other side of the facility came over and said that there had been an emergency and the call light had gone off in the bathroom of one of her rooms. Both residents in that room are total care and in no possible way could they have gotten up out of bed, pulled the call light cord and gotten back into bed be asleep and snoring in 30 seconds it took to check on them later on that night we had an alarm go off on one of our other side doors still the middle of the night most residents are sleeping and nobody is missing that could have gone out the door to set off the alarm We chalk it up to be some asshole kid pulling the door from outside. The doors are magnetic and they have locks that are designed to open if you put pressure on them for 10 seconds. It's a required emergency precaution. A nurse and I walked the perimeter of the building, but did not see anything suspicious. About 10 minutes later, after we get back inside, I'm checking on my residents when I hear one of them talking to someone. I go in the room to check on her. She's just laying there, looking at the side of the bed. I ask her what's going on because I heard her talking to someone. And she says, he wants to get on the bed. He what? I asked. He wants to get on the bed. Who wants to get on the bed? The little boy, she said. He wants to get on the bed, but I can't help him up. I freaked. I checked the whole room from top to bottom and every corner and any possible hiding spot. I didn't find anything, but I was on edge the rest of my shift. Number 12. Working the night shift once at a power plant during the winter, I'm pretty sure we saw a ghost. It was brutally cold and had snowed about a foot, so we had to call in some extra hands to help with the freezing. Around 2.30 a.m., the five of us went to the break room through the front door to get us some coffee and warm up. There's this old man sitting in the break room having a cup of coffee. But he never said a word, just a small raise of his cup and walked out the back door, which went into the plant. We all stood up and we were wondering who the hell that was. Opened the back door and there were no footprints in the snow or anything, just smooth, untouched snow. Still creeps all of us out to this day. And that was almost four years ago, and we still mention it every winter.
and number 13. I was a security guard. Most of the time I'm stationed in an abandoned bakery warehouse. It's always an overnight shift. One night, I was doing my first patrol on the inside of the warehouse. And it's been abandoned for three years and inside it just looks like everyone disappeared. There's still hard hats, cigarette butts in the break room, etc. I went into the darkest part where the yeast tanks, the ovens, and the conveyor belts are. I don't like it in there anyways. There's no lights, no windows, and you have to walk through with a flashlight. It's very cluttered and easy to get lost back there. I always feel something is watching me back there too. I get super nervous and started whistling to myself. Then I stopped whistling. I heard a shuffling. There was a bunch of noise behind me, so I turned around. Nothing there. When I turned my back around, I hear what sounded like a metallic object hitting the side of one of the tanks. Then my flashlight dimmed. I pulled out my phone to use that light. And then my phone just died. I got the fuck out of there. Funny thing, everything worked just fine when I came outside. I don't know how to explain it. But I would like for this to never happen again. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe. Uh, subscribe on your favorite podcasting app. We are on multiple different podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Breaker Audio. Um, we are on Google Podcasts. We are on Anchor.fm. And we are available um, with a video version on YouTube. Search us on YouTube, The Infiltrators. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button, smash that like button for us, and share it, and let your friends know about it. Um, I know people like scary stories. Um, they're very popular on the internet right now, and we are going to keep doing this, and we need your help to be able to do it. So like, subscribe, comment, and do that on YouTube Find us on Facebook, The Infiltrators, and we will keep this going. Um, I'm Zach Halcox, and until next time, we'll see you. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your own podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need in a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Season 1, Episode 2 of this podcast is sponsored by Diamond Vape. If you vape, you can get really good deals at DiamondVapeUSA.com. I vape, and they're the only people that I buy any products from. Their shipping is amazing, and shipping over $45 is free. We can ship anywhere in the United States, except for in Massachusetts, and Connecticut cannot sell tobacco-flavored products. But besides that, you can get it anywhere. DiamondVapeUSA.com.